It's 1972. You're staring at your TV screen and on both sides is a line that's moving up and down and there's a little square that's going backwards and forwards. It was a game called Pong and it fooled our brains with the computing power of what today would be a toaster. Fast forward to now and if you strap on a VR headset, you could literally be standing in Rome looking around just like you would in real life. The graphics card in that VR headset is about a billion times faster than the Pong board. Now, if you took that level of technology over the last 40 years, and then you move it over just a couple of centuries, even if the current Moore's law was slowed down, well, engineers, they have backup plans. We're talking about things like quantum chips, light-based processors, brain-like circuits, but Eventually, they're still going to hit a ceiling. That's unless they build a computer bigger than a planet. Now you might be saying, Bert, why are you giving us all this information for all this sci-fi? It's not sci-fi. That's the vision the tech forecasters plugged into their math. That's exactly why Elon Musk back in 2016, when he was talking to the audience, he said there's one in a billion's chance that we're living in this universe right now. He was simply just following this curve to a very terrifying logical end. I mean, think about it. If we're able to go to Pong, from Pong to VR in just one lifetime, then what does the next lifetimes buy? Maybe a cosmos so perfectly rendered that even as smartest people that lives there now, who's firing particle beams into the void, they never spot a single pixel. And if somebody somewhere is already beta testing the star-sized computer, well, that strange cosmic ray cutoff that Dr. Raymond just found well, it might be the very first screen tear.